But here we have the interesting and very weird story about Elisha and King Ahab. Actually, this is after Ahab. This is after, this is Yehoram. Yehoram, who is as bad as Ahab, it was the, what he was the, the son of Ahab. The son of Ahab. The, also a son of Jezebel, Jezebel. <clears throat> Terrible family, but they were the kings of what we call Israel. You remember that the kingdom of, e, of Israel split after King Solomon passed away. And uh, one second, let me close the door. After King Solomon passed away and the king that took over the north, they had big promises. He was very promising, but he let everybody down. Uh, I mean, it depends what you mean, what's down or not. If you're talking about Torah and Mitzvah, he left everybody down. But if you're talking about having a good time, he was very popular. And he said that you can worship golden calves and all sorts of other bizarre things. And with that, he see he kept control of this. Okay, so he dies, and there's like uh, when when did he die? He dies like um, oh something like almost a hundred years later, hundred years later, eighty years later. There 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 is a, a king called Yoram Yehoram and Yehoram. He is the son of uh, of uh, Ahab, the king Ahab, and Jezebel, Izebel. And as can be expected, he's pretty bad. The fact is, he's not as bad as his father and his, as his mother were. They were like really, how do you say, hardcore, high high level bad. They did all the worst things you can possibly, including. Idolatry it was by, by the murder and my sensuous and the decadence, everything. So here he takes over. Who? The, the, so every, the, everything in Israel is like, you know, just it's all coming apart. The whole, you know, observe, and the people are still observing the Torah. They believe in God. They believe in the Torah. They believe in God. But they also had very strong impulses, issues, huh? Issues, personal issues. And then they felt in order to alleviate this pressure from their issues, so they had to serve idols and do other, um, uh, how do you say, bizarre and unusual things as far as the Torah is concerned. As far as the world is concerned, no problem. What's, what's the big deal? Except murder. There wasn't that much. Okay, anyway. So here we have um, Yoram. Now this whole story takes the place in the time of, of, of Yoram. Here's Elisha. The prophet Elijah, there's Eliyahu Anavi. I guess in English they call that Elijah. And then there's Eliyahu and there's Elisha. So Elisha, he takes over from Eliyahu and he's got in a way more power than, than uh, he enlivens the dead. He enlivens the dead, dead, dead child and everything. He provides food for thousands of people, whatever, for just a couple of loaves of bread. Okay, so there is a time when the the, the the king of Israel, and he's still he's he's in den denial of this whole thing. He he thinks he's okay. So there's a big famine that occurs, a big famine, and the famine lasts for seven years. Famine, and of course the famine is because of the, the sins of the people. But the, the, he does the king only admits that afterwards. You'll see. And then in addition to that, the armies of Aram, which some people translate that as to be Syria, and some people translate that as to be where, with another word, as um, Syria and some other place, where are they going? Anyway, some nation that was over there, ben, uh, ben Haddad was the king of, I guess it was Syria or Aram. Aram, it says Aram, okay. So anyway, this huge army is surrounding. Um, so the, the army comes, there's a one story where he he heals the leper, Elisha. Anyway, the whole army comes to get Elijah the prophet, and he strikes them all with blindness. Okay. Meanwhile, there's this terrible <clears throat> famine going on over the place. 
So the king, he doesn't know what to do. He's walking along and a lady calls out and says, listen, can you do me a favor? And you're the king and uh, be the judge in this case. Terrible case, what's the case? Said, well, we don't have anything to eat. So I gave my son to be slaughtered. Everybody, leave. they said today, you give your son, tomorrow I'll give my son. He couldn't eat both of them and there was no refrigeration. So I'll give my son, I gave my son yesterday and we ate up, we ate him. Now we're alive. And then I don't know, whatever, a couple of days passed and we're hungry again. And she's supposed to give her son and she refuses. So what's that do? The king tears his garments and he says, wow, look at what we've gotten to. And it's all the fault of Eliyahu, of, 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 of Elisha, Elijah the prophet. He's a big holy man. He could pray to God and he could make the thing stop. The fact is it was the, the whole problem. If anybody was at fault, it was the king. But so the king comes to kill Elijah the prophet and he brings a man with him and the man, one of his helpers, a captain or something. And, is, and he says, his captain says, um, you know, what's gonna be, you know, you, you, why, why don't you pray for the people? We're gonna kill you. So he said, listen, tomorrow there's gonna be so much wheat. You won't be able to believe it. It'll just be so cheap, but you won't have any enjoyment of it. You're not gonna enjoy it. Okay, now starts our story, right? Started off the story. So instead of just telling exactly what happened, so this is sort of like in, in how do you say, movie, motion picture style. It starts off with four people and you don't know what they're doing, what's the point. And then all of a sudden this thing unfolds and you see the immensity of what's going to happen. So ready, here we go. Ba'arba Nashim or you. Now this is of course relevant to this week's Torah portion which talks about how to heal the Tzorat. Arba Anashim Hayu, there were four people that were Mitzorayim, and they had this biblical Torah affliction called Mitzorayim, that they have to live outside of the camp. And really they're supposed to be separate one from the other also, but anyway, they... And so, Mitzorayim, Patachashar. And they were at the entrance of the gate. The Oyomor Ish El and they said one to the other, Mana they were sitting at the gate of, of what Jerusalem, I guess. They couldn't go outside of the city. No, maybe it wasn't Jerusalem, couldn't be. This is what this is talking about in uh, in Samaria. This is the, the kingdom of, of Israel. Jerusalem is in the southern part. So he said there were they were anywhere the gate of the of the of the big city where the, the capital city where the uh, the king was, where the castle was. <clears throat> and they said, now inside there's this famine going on, right? And the enemy is surrounding them from the outside. And they also are on the outside, but there's some place where the enemy can't see them. And everybody's starving. And these guys, these people, they have three problems. Not only is the enemy want to kill all the Jews soon, and they're not in the city, but also there's famine inside of the city. And not only that, they're also Tzoraim. They have this Mitzorah. So they, so they said, listen, what are we sitting over here for? Yomer Ishal Re'eu. They said one to the other, what am I sitting, what are we sitting for here for? Ad Mato until we die. Uh, there's nothing to eat. Let's go and give ourselves over to the enemy. And the enemy, at least, maybe will give us something to eat. We can't break into the city because there's a famine. Or Muslim will die over there. If we die over here, we'll die over here. Let's throw ourselves at the camp of Arom, the Syrians, whoever Arom was back then. Im yechan you know if they have mercy on us, Nikhia will live. If they kill us, so we'll die. In any case, we're gonna die. It's our only chance. Here's death for sure. There, but Yakuba Vanesh, if they woke up early in the morning, Laboa Machana Aram to go to this huge camp of Aram. Almost how many soldiers there were? Thousands, tens of thousands. They abo katsia machana, they went to the edge of the city around to the end of the camp. Huge camps camped around this um, 
the capital city, it slipped my mind for some reason, it's the capital city of, of Samaria. I think it was, was a Shem. Anyway, there's nobody in the camp, the whole army camp is deserted. What happened? Why is it deserted? Adonoi Hishmiya at Machane Aron. God blasted out, made herd in this camp of Arom, Kol Rechava Kol Sus Kol, Kol Chayel Gadol, the sound of chariots and riders and foot soldiers. And the Aramites in the nighttime, they said, Hine, Sechar Leinu Melch Yisrael at Malchi Achitim. It must be that the kings of Israel, they paid uh, a tribute. They bought um, soldiers. Ve'ed Malchi Mitzrayim and the kings of Chiti, wherever that is, and the kings of Egypt. Anyways, these were big empires back then. They're all gone now. The only one that's left is the Jews. They must have hired them to come on us. Right? Paid soldiers. And everybody must have run away in the morning. Right? They ran away. They they heard these imaginary voices. Everybody heard. And they weren't imaginary. They, God really made these noises. And they thought there was an army, but there was no army. In any case, these people, they figured that all the soldiers, they ran away. They left their tents and their horses, and their donkeys. As it was. And they ran away. That's what happened. Right? This is the narrator telling the story. And these four lepers, lepers is not the word, but for lack of a better word, for these the people that were afflicted, the afflicted ones. Al Katsia Machanet to the end edge of the camp. So they went into one camp, one into one tent. And they ate and they drank. They took silver and gold and garments. And they hid them. They went to another. They also took spoil from there. And they hid it. Suddenly they realized. Now this is this is not just one or two tents. Here we have tens of thousands of tents, and they left everything that they have. Not, we don't do the proper thing. Cain means proper. Now, Yom This is a this is a, a, a how do you say like a a big news day. We got good news. Let's go. Be quiet. We'll wait until the day like, really shines. If we wait any longer, it'll be like a sin on our part. We can't just leave everybody in the, in the city is all starving, and we're just going to sit here and fill ourselves up. Not only that, we'll be the only people left. Nobody, nobody all the Jews are going to be dead, except for us. We can save everybody. You know, one day, maybe we'll be finished with our Sorat, our disease, and then at least we'll have a, a town to go to. You know, the, the, if we wait longer, then Israel is going to be the, the the city where we are, the city where the Jews are, is going to be like here. It's all going to be deserted. Everybody's going to die. So <clears throat> let's see what to do. One second, let me just see something. Yeah. And. Yeah. Okay. We let's let's go right now. This is now we have to. This is they they went there like you know a couple of hours before the sun rose, and now they they're eating and drinking. Let's go to Beit Hamelach to the house of the king, right? King Achav. They went to the city. They more and they said, "Banu Aram." We went to the our city of Aram. Being an Shamish, there's nobody there. But call Adam, there's no sound even. Ki'im, Asus, Asur, the horses are all tied to their posts. Chamor, 
Asur and the, the, the donkeys, but all in Kasherim and the tents are just left as they were. Vayikru Asharim, Vayagidu Beit HaMelech Penima, the men, because they didn't go into the city, they were lepers, they were whatever it is, Mitzorah. So the people at the gate <clears throat> let everybody know what was going on. Vayakum HaMelech, the king, woke up. Lila was still, I guess it was still not night, not full, full day yet. El Abadav, Agir and Allahim, and Tell them, lanu arom. He said, "Tell us what 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 happened over there." He speaks to the lepers. You should know we're all everybody's hungry. We went from the camp, right? With the, he's they're telling the lepers are telling the story. We went out from where we were camped, and we. <clears throat> um, we we hit out in this we hit on this place. Oh, I see, I see, I see. I'm sorry. The king woke up and he said, "I want to tell you what's going on over here. Don't believe these lepers. Don't believe these guys. What Aram did, he knows that we're all hungry. So this is a big trick. This is what the king thought. Achav." And he told, told all of his army to abandon their place and to hide in the fields. And they said, when the Jews come out of the city and they look, we'll grab all of them alive. We'll take them all, all prisoners, capture them alive. And then we can go into the city and nobody's going to stop us. We can take anything that we want to. And one of the servants of the king said, listen, your majesty, you could be right that maybe this is a big trick, but if we wait here any longer, everybody's going to die. Let's send some scouts. Let's take five horsemen. They will represent all the Jews that are here in the city. They are like, and also all the Jews that have already died. In other words, the horsemen aren't in any more danger than anybody else. Just think about it. If the Armenians, the Aroms, are they're really there, so they'll die. But it means that if they're really there, then we're going to die also. And if they're not there, then this is great. At least send them. Let's send out some scouts. And we'll see. So the king sent out two horses, two horsemen. He sent them to this camp. They more will go out and see. And they went out to the Jordan River. We'll see what's going on. They went and they saw the whole thing was empty. So they figured, okay, let's see where they're hiding. So they followed the path till the Jordan River. It's all filled with garments and vessels. That they 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 left, they left behind. They didn't. If anything fell down, they didn't even bend up to pick it up. They were so. And these scouts came back. And they said to the king. They said to the king. All the people went out of the, <clears throat> the, the, the town and they took spoil at Machan Ali Aram. All the food, everything that was there, they were dying. Everyone was dying. They didn't have any food. Seven years. And one, whatever it is, a pound of, of a, a grain cost one shekel and two of barley grain was also for a shekel. Just like God said before. Oh, so now let's get back to remember. If you remember what was in the beginning, that the king went with his uh, captain. He went to. He was threatening whatever Elijah the prophet, and Elijah the prophet told the captain that there's going to be plenty of grain, which is a ridiculous thing because there was no, there wasn't anything to eat whatsoever. It says that the, they were selling the heads of of donkeys. People were eating, but there was nothing to eat. So it says that there's going to be such plentiful grain, but you're not going to get any of it. You won't get any pleasure from it. It says, why not? We'll see. 
Hamelech Yifkir at the Shalish. Asher, so he took this captain that went with him. The king appointed him, uh, you know, Alashar to the gate to make every sure that everything, you know, people didn't go, it wasn't confusion, that people weren't trampling one another. In any case, the Yeramasu Ha'am Bashar Yamos. And the people, they trampled him on the gate. They trampled him, just like Elisha, Elijah the prophet said. Was it Elijah? Elisha. Asher Diber Bader Beredata Melechalov. By Yikadavarisha Lokim was just like the Elisha said to the king, they more satayim sharim, that there will be sarim, that the two, whatever is units of barley will be for one shekel, and one unit of wheat will be for one shekel. The east macher, but in that, that's the way it will be. Bashar Shomron at the gates of Shomron. Bayan Ashalish at the Isha Lokim, and this captain, he said, Hine Hashem Ose Arobot Bashamayim. God has made, God has made windows in the heaven. But what's he going to do? He's going to, when, when Elisha originally told him, this captain scoffed at him and said, come on, there's not, not anything to eat. And people are, are, are eating their children. And you're going to tell me that the, 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 the marketplaces are going to be filled with wheat tomorrow. What God is going to open up windows in heaven. God will, yes, open up windows in heaven. And it'll be like this. You're going to see with your eyes, but you're not going to eat any of it. And so it was. And he was trampled in the gate and he died. What do we see from this? The power of God's prophets, the love of God for the Jewish people, the patience that God has with the Jewish people. I and mean, these people were like big time sinners in, 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 um, Israel, in the, top, the upper, upper, upper kingdom in Israel. And nevertheless, God held off like 250 years. For 250 years, they were worshiping idols. 250 years. And God held off until finally, this whole story happened um, well before the destruction, 100 years, whatever, 150 years before the destruction of the, um, there was a king, whatever was it, Shalmansar, he came and he took away the 10 tribes and they're gone to this very day. And this is Mashiach is going to somehow or other bring them all back. So you can say, that can't be, possibly be, how they're going to be, I mean, they've, they've been gone for well over 2,500 years. They've been scattered all over. How are they all going to come back? Makes no sense. And once in a while, somebody pops up and says, you know, the American Indians are the one of the 10 tribes and the Ethiopians are the 10 tribes. There's a theory that all the English people are the 10 tribes. King is circumcised at the eighth day. Anyway, to this day, nobody has any idea who the 10 tribes are. But Mashiach is going to bring them all back. You can say, this is, how can it be such a thing like that? Well, don't say that because we see that there was this captain that said that, you know, now there's nothing to eat at all. How is it going to be, you know, plenty tomorrow of wheat and grain? How is it going to be? And because he doubted, so it didn't come out too good for him. So let us not doubt, even though nobody's going to get punished. Don't get scared. I'm not threatening anybody. You can doubt all you want to, but there's no point in it. Why live a negative life? So here we have miracles. We can rely on miracles. Jewish people rely on miracles and Jewish people have lived on miracles for the last, since Abraham, 4,000 years, and it will continue. Have a good day with Mashiach. Now, God willing, today is what Wednesday. So Thursday, tomorrow, we're going to learn, finish the mimer, and we're going to start a different mimer in the morning for Hasidut. Have a good day. God bless you all. Yechia Melech.